West Side of Chicago, it's time for the Greg Show, starring Greg Rich I'm Scotty Joe Vegas, and by the stay tuned for the next 30 minutes, because we'll talk about letting go and telling people you're on the men and the mind their own GD business. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gregory Shrug! Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to The Greg Show. I'm Greg Struess, and hopefully for the next 30 minutes, uh, I'm not going to be fake, you know, like Hillary's southern accent. (laughs) Have you followed that whole thing? Now Hillary Clinton has a fake southern drawl. Well, she is originally from Arkansas. She is, yeah, but Arkansas is not uh, technically in the south. She wasn't raised in the South. From what I understand, she was raised in southern Illinois, but there's no drawl down that way. So is Lincoln. Right. So, so Arkansas, Arkansas, is not really the South as we know it, uh, but at least she has some things in common with her husband who knows some things about being deep in the South. Thank you. All right. You know, the only thing that's more fake than Hillary Clinton's southern drawl is Bruce Jenner's breasts. Manischewitz, as Grandpa Clarence Struess used to say, was Bruce Jenner really a woman all of this time? Or more of a media vixen? Read, you know, ho. Here she is on the cover of Vanity Fair magazine. And she's all dialed up, ready to express herself to the world. Now we're talking about Bruce Jenner's going through that, that change. And now if I were ever to undergo this radical of a change, my haircut included, uh, I do not feel for one minute that I would be you know, sharing such a private matter with millions of people. Uh, unless, of course, I could reap millions in freebies. So it's... You'll have to forgive me. My paycheck has been coming late. Um, (laughs) My feeling is that Bruce was emasculated being with the Kardashians, much like I was being raised with three sisters, but it's a whole separate story. We'll save that for another time. But you know what? Let's bring in the clown, ladies and gentlemen, the clowns, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, for the circus has only just begun, right? I am sick and repulsed and need help, but who cares? Thank you. Anyway, uh, great show tonight. Taboo Topics, Scotty Joe Vegas, all the way from Mosinee, Wisconsin. Say it again, Wisconsin. Mosinee, Wisconsin, baby. So, <laughs> so a couple shows ago, <laughs> I love this story. You t- You were talking about how you went into a place uh, for a sandwich and and you went (laughs) to give the coupon and the guy was like, no, no coupon coupon here. (laughs) It's in Tinley Park. It's called Tinley Park. Something to do with euros. And you ended up spending $20 anyway. Yes. And I had my coupon book, my entertainment book. Buy them. Former owner. Go to entertainment book, buy them. I like that. Former owner. Anyway, I'm Greg. This is The Greg Show. And we are reinventing community television from the west side of Chicago, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for joining us. I knew somebody by the name of Sarah in uh, Seattle, Washington, who was also transgender and uh, believe that a girl should always order top shelf liquor. And it was always like at least 80 bucks every time we went out. <laughs> great, great softball coach, by the way. And a little bit too much information from the past.
Welcome back to The Greg Show. I'm Greg Struess along with Scotty Joe Vegas. How you doing? Earl? How you doing, my friend? How it's you doing? Good to see you, kid, good as we see say. Him. No um, two shot on that handshake, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. I, th I think he's busy right now. He is. He's, he's scolding, uh, scolding. He's been having to deal with many of our problems out here with uh, various um, issues. He, he's an all-star. Did you know that? Absolutely. He's an all-star. You, know, you know, when you're given something such as, in this case, equipment, you make it work. Now, there's people that would literally throw a fit saying, I will not do a show unless I can have my HD cameras, my latest technology of uh, digital sound, all kinds of stuff. But we tough it out every week here at The Greg Show. Imagine all those poor residents in Elmhurst that are with an ugly husband or an ugly wife, and they have to make it work no matter what. Mm -hmm. and, ugly, and ugly kids on top of that. Yeah. And if you have an ugly wife or an ugly husband, send us a picture. Take some time out and uh, look us up on, on YouTube.com with the search words Greg Strew Show. Uh, always on there. Always alive, always vibrant, even with a multicolor tie. And uh, what do we call this? The overhang, you were saying? The, the J-Lo front side. Absolutely. And hey, you know man. What? I'm, I'm not liking it, and it's bugging me. You know, we're at that age where it's either you're going to be a fat guy, you're going to be a skinny guy. I, I There's nothing wrong with being a fat guy or a skinny guy. Just be yourself. I don't want to be that. Because who likes fat people? I mean, if you're heavy set, you know, and you can wear it well and you're happy in your life. But you know Golden what? Corral. There was a guy. <laughs> there was a Mr. Dritzler was our gym teacher in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade over at Franklin uh, Elementary School in Dalton and Lincoln Junior High. And he always used to say, nobody likes fat people. Fat people are unhappy people. Fat people are unhealthy people. Fat people are fat. That's what he used to say. And, you know, there were people in the class that... Did he have a, did he have a chin when he was saying that? No. Fat. He, but he was saying, fat people are... You can get away with that stuff back then. Because you could, you could drop, you could uh, character assassinate anybody. Right. Can't and do it now. Can't no, say fat. No, you can't say fat. You can't, you can't grab a kid anymore and whip him against the wall and straighten him out, do some street justice that way. That's not right. You know, I, there's a little joke that I had with my uh, little nephew... Gino, I said, go ahead, go ahead and put your fist through the wall. Uncle Greg will buy a plasma TV. You know, we, we reward bad behavior. Really? That's what we do. Well, then what, what happened in our case? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying that's now, now we're just kind of uh, So my bad parents behavior. made me fat? Oh, my God, I had a breakthrough. What, what happened? No. You like the suit? I love Hi. the suit. Uh, um, how you doing? Can we get, you know, because if, if you take a look, this is really nice uh, material, as they say. Yes, yes. But is it materializing? So we're talking beforehand, and you, you said, you don't have any problems. You don't have any problems. I do. do. you? But you say, you look troubled today. I look troubled. And I feel troubled today. And I don't know what that is. And it bothers me. I'll tell you what it is. This is what really kind of irritates me, to be honest with you. When you work a job, and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'll just say I have a friend who works a job, works very hard, is appreciative of his job and his employer. And this friend came up to me to talk to me about his problems with his paycheck. So the friend mentioned how he had worked and went to cash his check, put it in the deposit, and a week later it came back returned. So this friend went to the boss and said, by the way, in a very uncomfortable, I think that's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> so what happens is the guy goes to the boss and said, by the way, my paycheck bounced. And he wrote him another check with the fee or whatever. That sounds like a Marx Brothers skit. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Goes and cashes the check. All right. It finally clears. So about a week or two later, the guy is waiting for his paycheck. And it comes four days late. Now... Sounds like my mother. Does she pay late? Uh, we somehow... Our one company, they get them on time, and she kind of told the boys, Do you, is it okay if your check's a couple days late? And I'm like, then they got to complain to me, and I'm sitting there going like this, saying, yeah. Hey, it, it's bad for morale. Get them their check. So, you know, I see this going on, and then you kind of see things going on in, like, this other situation that I have a friend who works at a restaurant. And 
so, you know, needless to say, this person has taken a pay cut, but yet, you know, the, the owners can pull up in brand new cars and then want to cut back on people's wages, saying that they don't have the money for it. But yet, they get to have all of it. And that's the problem. I'm not saying that if somebody is investing in a business, they have every right to make whatever money they want. Do you believe in God? Do I? Yeah. Yes. So do you ever think that maybe it's God trying to tell you to go someplace else? Oh, we're talking about you or your friend. I'm sorry, we're talking about the friend. Yes. Because sometimes God makes bad things happen to get you somewhere else. Okay. So I deflated everything you did, didn't no, I? No, no. I didn't mean that. My friend has been, uh, has always been a very dependable worker. He uh, has always given his all, but he's lost his motivation. And I really don't know how to counsel him in this situation. And I feel his pain because he recently made some changes in his life. He's living on his own and, you know, trying to, trying to do the right things, helping people, and this theme just kind of comes up all the time. It's a high wire act, and the anxiety of the person is probably feeling of, like, is my next check going to bounce? Is it not going to bounce? Like, is one's, you know, and this is what he's asking. He's like, you know, am I not worthy enough to be happy in my job and get paid on time? Does that make sense? Yes, but see, that may be the person anxiety that they're having thinking about that because they don't feel valued. They don't feel that they are a part of the team. If I mattered, you'd make sure my check would be good. So, how would you handle it with the? Because I really am I the check writer? You are not the check writer. You're the person that worked the hours, and all of a sudden. You know, this is coming up. What would you do? You love the job. Let's say you love yep. the job. You love the people you work with. But don't you work to get a paycheck? I would be the first guy to cash my check. <laughs> I would figure it out. I'd send a homeless guy. It's a, hey, here's five bucks. Go put it in my account. See if it bounces. I, I would be proactive about it. I would make sure that, oh, it bounced. And then, like, what are we going to do? Oh, it bounced. I guess the question is that I'm asking. I'm oh, sorry. You're, you're not answering it. And I'm sorry. sorry I haven't asked you directly. Okay. Is that a deal breaker? Is that a deal breaker to say, you know what, you don't value, you don't value, I'm talking about my friend, you don't value me as an employee enough to pay me on time. How long has he been at the establishment? Uh, probably a year. Did somebody less. give him a break? Yes. There's no excuse why your check should bounce, or excuse me, the person's check should bounce. There's no reason for it. But uh, is it a deal breaker to say, you know what, it's time to look somewhere else because this guy is full of it? I think you should always look somewhere else. Because you, or excuse me, this person being over <laughs> forty some odd years old, you know. I didn't say how old he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this young, strapping young man who's 21, ruggedly handsome, ruggedly, okay, like ruggedly handsome, and uh, a giver. And uh, yes, it depends on what seat. But go it ahead. is true. <laughs> he likes to make stew <laughs> and boof. Didn't he more stew? Oh, so yeah. it's a little. Um, it's a little unsettling, and he called me beforehand. And uh, called you or your friend? It, my friend called me to talk oh, to me about okay. this, and I, I just I really didn't know what to say to him because the people that I've asked have all said that is the deal breaker. You you know, tell him to look for another job. When all things are equal, look for another job because it's obvious that something's going on with the money, and you don't know really what your friend. Maybe he goes to. the horseshoe and spends too much money. I don't know. What eight hundred? Everybody else gets to be a high roller except my friend. Hmm. The pomper. The pomper. What is it? The pom. The pomper. Pomper. The pomper. The pomper. Yes, of course. Uh, what are some of the other issues that you face in? Well, and the, okay. So here's another one. What about ethics? What about ethics in business? Don't you think that somebody has an ethical uh, responsibility in? Ensuring that their employees are paid on time. The whiners of this country have not know about ethics because they're saying, "I get my paycheck. I work. I'm supposed to get my paycheck." And they're a whiner though and, to and this to these folks who yes. want to play them and say, yeah. "Oh, all you guys do is complain. I paid yep. you four days late." Well, it's four days late all the time. That's what my friend was saying. Oh, your, your friend. Yeah. I was going for the whole thing about when you say ethics, people today. They, they just expect their check. And you got to really think about that person that's writing that check. Do you trust that person to work for that person? Are, are you, when you break bread, do you want to break bread with this person? It all, 
if there's things going through your mind, we're like, I don't know if I can get another job, but if you don't trust the guy, you need to leave. That's, that's stressing your, that's stressing your friend's body, excuse me. And you have to make sure that, uh, you got to go with flow. Life is so short. Your friend, I really feel sorry for him or her or it or whatever. I don't think that it's feeling sorry. It's that he realizes, you know, in this conversation that I've had, that he's done a lot of different things in his life. He's excited about this, you know, about his new career because he, he's made like a midlife career like a lot of us change. And it's not being validated by not necessarily being validated by the employer because he knows he's doing a good job. But the reward is, okay, how come, how come I'm, you know, how come, this is what he's saying to me, how come I'm giving and yet can be judged when my employer is not paying, whoops, not paying me on time. It and might, I, it I might I be just, your friend saying, hey, hey <laughs> his check didn't he bounce. A job. But you know what I mean? I don't know. Have you ever, you've probably never, uh, been in that kind of situation? I've been, oh, I, I've been the, in that situation where, you know, it's you're you're low on the priority list. You're mm -hmm. like, well, the people who work 300 miles closer to the checkbook, they get paid first. Then, hey, if it gets lost in the mail, it gets lost in the mail. And then everybody sits there going, like, geez, you know, I I I, I depended on that check to be there on Saturday, and that's what happens when you live hand to mouth. Right, hand to mouth, my boy, living hand to mouth. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we sorry. are talking about being paid, <laughs> sorry, being paid by, by an employer uh, that you're working for. And if they continue to play games, what are some of the things that you can do about that? Um, you know, in doing research for my friend, I found out that, with, that there's various payroll laws. And if an employer isn't paying you on a certain time or is shorting you or your check continues to bounce, there's fines. But it's uh, litigious, as we say. That's uh, a silver dollar word. Litigious. I believe it's lit litigious. It, it, it becomes uh, where you're going to court and you're trying to fight for something. And then all of a sudden your reputation's on the line because are you being a crybaby? Because what's rightfully yours is, is you know, it's just such a fine line. Are you whining because you're getting paid late, or are you whining because you just want to complain about something? I think it's a valid complaint that this guy has, and I just I don't know how to counsel him on that. I think he should get out of the burning house and dust himself off and work for his competitor. Okay. Well, that's, that's good advice, I guess. Anyway, coming up, we are going to talk about what? Taboo. Are they Taboo? Are, are you ready in the control room? room? We'll do it a couple times. All right. We'll ready I don't know why room. I'm looking off to the Are room. you ready in the control room? Thumbs up. Are they ready? Taboo! Topics! When we come back in just a moment. Thank you for watching, everybody. Welcome back to The Greg Show. I'm Greg Struess, along with Scotty Joe Vegas. How are you doing tonight? Just a redhead. <laughs> I loved it because before we were, before, before the break, actually before we started tonight, he was playing his drum, and you, you did like this thing with your head, and I said, it's very Jack Lord-like, and you said, well, who's Jack Lord? Jack Lord was the original uh, uh, Steve McGarrett on Hawaii Five-0. Book him, Dano. Thing. Yeah, book him, Dano. Now do it. Do it. Because he had that. <laughs> 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 it sounds like you kind of had a rough week. You had to go and speak with um, uh, a high school situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it had to deal with something that you and I have talked about and something that I've been talking about is, is cell phones. Yes. And the danger of kids having 
cell phones. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that happen with cell phones. Um, one, people can get on the internet. Two, pictures can be taken and exchanged. And then all of a sudden with this Facebook epidemic, and I call it an epidemic because you know, I'm kind of old fashioned, but it's the epidemic in the sense that all these people were all connected, like six degrees of separation. A little too connected. A little too connected. Yep. So all of a sudden someone takes a picture of something and they post it on a, on a, a social networking site. Uh, you know, all hell can kind of break loose. I'm not saying that that's the situation that you're talking about, but I have seen, like, with promotional exams in police departments, somebody ended up posting answers. And then the people that are getting ready to take this exam, you know, have all the answers on this exam. And then they wonder why they're getting in trouble from their employer and from the cities that they work for because they posted this stuff mm -hmm. as a joke. Now, you can't go on a social network, I don't think, and, and lay into your boss and expect to have your job, right? Correct. Absolutely. So there's a little thing that, you know, and as we talk about Bruce Jenner, we're getting into this conversation. Ooh. Bruce Jenner decided to share all of this with the world. And a lot of people that have made the change in, in you know, the transsexual, it's called female to male, male to female, a, a woman that believes that But she's he still male. likes women. Uh, yes. Yeah, just because I watched somebody, the show. Just because... I, I, I'll tell you this. If Mrs. Kardashian needs a little pool boy, <laughs> I know a couple hairy guys from central Wisconsin with white socks that would help her out. Well... And, and what my issue is, and who really cares, is I'm sickened by how Bruce Jenner and the media have managed to once again manipulate the dumb people that watch TV and hang on every word. You know, people that really believe everything that they hear on TV. You know, if you watch CNN, I realize that CNN has been the only network that has covered race and it's always, you know, when black people are involved, it's always a black reporter, Don Lemon, is always down there. And it's the only network that's propagating hate, because that's really what it's about. We're not talking about what the issue is. Hate sells. Right. Hate is selling. And we're not really talking about the issue. The issue is, and I deal with people's misfortunes every day as a counselor. And not once do people ever accept responsibility for their own role in the situation. Or I'll give you an example. If, if I'm someone that's getting paid to counsel somebody and, and a person comes in and says, I need help. Okay, I'm helping you, but it's for a fee. Oh, you don't want to help me because, you know, this is affecting my, you know, this is affecting my health, but am I not supposed to get compensated when you already agreed to that. That's what a church is for if you want it for free. Right. You want to go see a professional, you've got to pay the man or have better insurance. But you don't want to help. And, and the thing is, is what happens to your telephone? They shut it off. They shut it off. What happens to Comcast and the triple play? They don't shut off one thing. They don't shut off the phone. Oh, or that's the, the internet. Sembrero. Yeah, they're like, we're cutting it all off. Say, excuse me, you don't have any money? We ain't got no honey. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyway... Did I get you off topic? Yeah, but people, people believe everything they hear uh, in the media. So Bruce Jenner has occupied all of the so-called news shows with her transition into femininity. And when all she really had to do was sit down with Martha Stewart for a few minutes and, and you know, get to know some things about, you know, homemaking and things like that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, my feeling is that there's kind of this disease that seems to be forming in the society where one no longer needs to demonstrate any couth or have any boundaries. Well, even though they're on a reality show and the producer said, hey, I'll throw you some extra money, give me the story, and that's why they did it. Okay, but instead of going now through... Now he can afford to get his top and his bottom and his garage fixed. <laughs> but instead of going through this very personal transition privately... It has been plastered all over the airwaves, internet, etc. People magazine. And and the thing is, is it's like, okay, people of people who are coming from, 
you know, making that decision of transgender. They really feel that this is a good thing because it puts it out into the public and makes it a, you know, makes it uh, a public discourse that we can talk about uh, transgenderism and, and talk about it in a, in a way. And I really don't think that that's what this is about. I think this is all about Bruce Jenner getting as much attention as he possibly can and milking the so-called media teat for everything that he can. That's just my... Now, does that sound warped? No. He looks like he's genuinely screwed up. I mean, like, okay. he's, he's, he, he ain't he's, getting, he's torn. He's not getting any He's more. not torn anymore because it's torn off. I still think he's probably got something down there. What he's, do you think? A little diving board? He's got no more Wheaties boxes. No more weed. But he was wearing nut huggers back on that on that cover of that Wheaties box. So it, it everything's going to be politically correct now because nothing will, none of his junk will hang out. Anyway, uh, I don't know what my point was at all. Yeah, what's, what's your point? My point is is that some things ought to be private. And when we're talking about people's privates and... and Things Another like 400 years from now, I mean, realistically, there's going to be, are you male, are you female, are you a male, and it ain't going to matter no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, we're like we're like in the 50s right now compared to what it's going to be a couple hundred years from now. Yeah. And are we, we going to have any sense of values? And that's what I'm wondering. And it's not saying that when somebody makes a change like this, that's not a value. I don't think that's a question of values. What I really feel is that it's a... It's, it's something that's very private and personal. And if it was meant for that way, why are all the pictures there? Why is all the media there? And it's really he, she is getting all of the media attention. And I want to talk about how that relationship with... No, I'll tell you what. I'll watch the Olympics if he's on there. I mean, I, I would never watch the games with, you know, if he was like normal. But if he's his sister, I'd watch. I would. <laughs> he looks like John Couture's sister. From Pose in Illinois. I just don't... Sorry, she uh, was hot or something, but... Uh, did I say should in any of this? Did I talk about should? I kind of think that this is a, a personal and a private matter. And when all the cameras are there and Vanity Fair and, and now showing the bra and, you know, it's just, as Grandma Helen used to say, all of Jerusalem hanging out. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> she's like... All of Jerusalem was hanging out. Uh, I just think that it's it's not really for other people. It's all about her. It's all about her. He's like a guy that goes to the car show that has a car. And, okay, he puts some hubcaps on. Hey, look at there. Hey, look at me. I, I got it buffed out. I got a bigger motor. Okay. You, but you on know a what I'm saying? Like the guy that's sitting there going... But, uh, but on a more serious note... Oh, I'm sorry. I was being serious. We're going to the end, I guess. Um, on a more serious note... Uh, did Bruce, could Bruce Jenner ever live up to any of his kids' expectations or be able to get any attention from them? So what would he do in order to do that? He became a media sensation. He decided to... He toasted them. <laughs> he, to he took to all them girls that thought they were... I saw them over in uh, Woodfield Mall one time. I took my little girl and they had a... They were outside a place that's...